What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 15.1 beta 3 to registered developers 8 days after the release of beta 2 and 5 days after the release of iOS 15.0.1. And in addition to this iOS release, we also got iPadOS 15.1 beta 3, watchOS 8.1 beta 3, tvOS 15.1 beta 3, macOS Monterey beta 9, and HomePod OS 15.1 beta 3. But in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS and what's new in the software, along with when to expect the final release. And for public beta testers, you guys can expect to see this update very soon. All right, so starting off with the size of this update, you can see here it came in over one gigabyte on my iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is pretty surprising for a point update, a third beta of a point update, but you will see why here in a moment. However, that size will be smaller for you if you're not on the 13 series and of course it does also depend on the version you're coming from but that was coming from beta 2 so let's go ahead and check out the build number for this update let's go into our settings general about 15.1 we can see the new build number here is 19b 5060d so we do have a d at the end of the build number we are not at the a phase yet so we probably have at least one to two more betas to go before the final release. And if we go down, you can see we did also get a modem firmware update. It's now 1.15.01. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 15.1 beta three? And the first thing is a pretty big one for the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max. If I go to video right here, take a look up top. We now have ProRes support included with this third beta. So this is an exclusive feature for the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max. And this is going to allow you to shoot extremely high res video. So if you go ahead and enable that here from the camera application, you can see up top that we have a max time. So the camera app will tell you how long you can record for before you run out of space. So this is a 256 gigabyte device and I can only record for 30 minutes. So that tells you how much space these ProRes video files take up. And if I change this from 4K to 1080p, you can see it changes it to 104 minutes. So of course, 4K is going to take up a lot more space than 1080. Now, if we go into our settings for this, so let's go to our settings and then down to the camera section right here, and then to formats, you can see down here, we now have the Apple ProRes under video capture. So you have a toggle there where you can turn it on or off. And right under it, it says ProRes is one of the most popular formats for video professional post-production. A minute of 10-bit HDR ProRes is approximately 1.7 gigabytes for HD and six gigabytes for 4K. Now keep in mind, if you have a 128 gigabyte iPhone 13 Pro or Pro Max, you will be limited to 1080p with ProRes. If you have a 256 gigabyte model and above, you will be able to shoot in 4K. So obviously now we see why Apple excluded ProRes 4K for the 128 gigabyte models. I mean, six gigabytes for one minute of 4K ProRes footage is insane. So I actually recorded a one minute video and I'll show you guys just how big that file size was. So here's a one minute video I took in ProRes at 4K 30 FPS. And you can see up here up top, it does say ProRes to indicate that. And you could see me right here. I mean, the quality looks about the same as regular to me. I mean, just on the surface, of course, if you go into editing and post-production, you know, and color correcting and things like that, you will see a difference, but on the surface, it doesn't look much different. And also one thing I noticed is that you have to manually focus when shooting in ProRes. It would not autofocus until I tapped on the object. So I'm not sure if that's a bug or if that's by design. Here I am testing it and it doesn't focus until I tap. So, you know, I'm not sure again if that's a bug or if it's just going to be a manual focus, you know, mode, but that is what I noticed. Now, as far as the size, if we swipe up here, you can see that one minute file right there is 5.45 gigabytes, which is crazy. So that's pretty accurate to say it's six gigabytes per one minute. So I'm sure if there's more, you know, going on in the video, it probably would be six gigabytes or above. So ProRes video has finally been added here for the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. But of course, the big caveat, the big catch to that is that it eats up a ton of storage space, but thankfully it's finally been added here. We also have another change inside of the camera application for the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. And you can see right here, if I put my AirPods case really close to the lens, it does not focus. It does not go into macro mode like it used to before. And that's because there's a new toggle in 15.1 beta three. If we go here and we go all the way down to the bottom, there is a new toggle down here 
for auto macro. So it says automatically switch to the ultra wide camera to capture macro photos and videos. So you can now disable macro mode if you want to on the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. Now we also have a major fix inside of the shortcuts application here on beta three. So I have beta two on the left, beta three on the right. And this has to do with changing wallpapers via shortcuts. So you can see over here on the left, when I try to change a wallpaper, this happened on beta one and beta two of 15.1. You can see there, it gives me an error message and it is not set the wallpaper. However, on beta three, when I run the exact same shortcut right here, you will notice that it doesn't give me an error and it also changes the wallpaper like it should. So that was a big bug that has been plaguing us iOS 15.1 users for a while. And thankfully it's finally been fixed here in this third beta. Also new in beta three, I noticed that we have a change to share play when you try to share your screen. So if your phone is not unlocked and you try to share your screen and now asks you to unlock your phone to share the screen. Whereas before it would just let you share your screen. It would not say unlock to share. So that is new in share play. As far as any other changes, I didn't notice any, I didn't notice any stability improvements. However, there could be, you know, I'll have to use this for a while to see, but share play, you know, every single beta is looking closer and closer to ready for prime time. And it just seems a lot better than it was in the initial iOS 15 betas. Now iOS 15.1 also adds some new features for the AirPods Pro and AirPods Max. So as you guys know, we did see a firmware update yesterday for the AirPods. I did post a video on that. If you missed it, it's up in the cards and down in the description below, but it was a pretty big firmware update for all AirPods. And the main features came for the AirPods Pro and AirPods Max. So we got the Find My functionality, then we also got the conversation boost feature. So like if you go into here, let me go ahead and connect one of my AirPods. And if we tap on the ear inside of the control center, you can see we have this down here, conversation boost, which is new in 15.1 and also with the new firmware update for the AirPods, along with the ability to change the ambient noise reduction. And if we go into our settings into accessibility and then down to AirPods and to our AirPods Pro right here, you can see we have audio accessibility settings and then headphone accommodation you have custom audio setup right here, which is new as well. And you can use an audiogram to customize your audio, which will make your AirPods sound much better when you're listening to music videos or anything. So if you have the AirPods Pro or AirPods Max, I would definitely go ahead and check that out. And also make sure you watch that video that I posted yesterday on the new features included with that AirPods firmware updates. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we did also see an update for the HomePod and HomePod minis. So you will see lossless audio and spatial audio support now for the home pods here in 15.1 and as far as bugs and bug fixes go it seems like we still have the storage bug here in 15.1 beta 3 so like if you go to your settings general iphone storage some people are still seeing issues up here where the calculations are just simply wrong and it's saying that you're using up a lot more space than you actually are so that still seems to be an issue however the issue where it said storage almost full here on the main screen even though you weren't almost full has has been addressed and you should not be seeing that bug anymore here on beta three. And as far as the touch responsiveness bug, mainly in like the YouTube application and the mail applications, that does not appear to be fixed. It's not mentioned in the release notes or, you know, I've not seen anybody mention that it has been fixed. So I would imagine we still have those touch responsive issues in beta three and the same with CarPlay. So if you're having issues with CarPlay, you probably still will have those after updating to beta three. Unfortunately, I hope they are fixed by the time 15.1 rolls out to the public. But one thing I will go ahead and say is if you go into your settings and go to music and then go to EQ, you might want to turn your EQ off because that did you know, fix the crashing issue with CarPlay for some users. So if you have an EQ set, change that to off and you might see a minor fix or, you know, a temporary fix for CarPlay until we see a permanent fix from Apple, hopefully in the final public release of 15.1. And if we take a look at the release notes here for beta three, you can see it's mainly known issues and the main ones are under telephony and voiceover. So under telephony right here, you can see it says users might experience loss of audio during calls followed by the call being dropped in some conditions. And the workaround is to simply toggle airplane mode on and off or reboot. So if you use 
iOS 15.1 beta 3 on your main device, you may experience issues with phone calls, which is once again, a reason why I recommend not running a beta on your main device. And then also under voiceover, a known issue here in beta three is that users might not be able to activate alarms in the clock application. So that is one thing to keep in mind as well, if you do use voiceover. And then it also mentions some bugs with the home application, but it doesn't address the main one, which is the transfer to HomePod feature, the handoff to HomePod feature, which is still extremely buggy here in 15.1 beta three. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance feels just fine here in beta three. I mean, nothing too crazy it doesn't feel too much different from beta 2 in my experience although it hasn't been very long that i've been using this so time will tell of course i will bring you guys my follow-up video this weekend that will touch on the performance and battery life but so far everything feels nice and smooth some of the bugs have been sorted out so that is a good sign i did also want to go ahead and run a geekbench test here to see the scores we get with beta three because it feels a little bit smoother but again a lot of times that is placebo so we'll see if the score is higher than beta two so we got a 1738 on the single core and a 4610 on the multi-core score so the single core was higher than beta two but the multi-core was slightly lower than beta two but still some pretty great results there on the geekbench test now when it comes to battery life battery life is just fine here in beta three of course it's too early to tell yet if it's better than beta two and better than 15.0.1 or not but i will touch on that in my follow-up video this weekend although i would say that we could possibly see a bug fix update for the battery drain because some people had issues with battery drain in beta 2 so you could see improved battery life here in beta 3 but of course we will see this weekend after i've actually used the software for a prolonged period all right so now what's next here for apple so today is wednesday october 6th and we could expect to see ios 15.1 beta 4 next week so apple has continued to stay on a weekly cycle it was a little bit later this week because we did go eight days before the next beta but it was still within you know one week or before two weeks i should say so i would expect to see beta 4 next week on the week of the 11th it's probably going to come on the 12th or the 13th it could even come on the 11th who knows but after that i would expect to see the rc build right here most likely on the week of the 18th and then the final on the week of the 25th the final week of october maybe on the 26th or the 27th so those are just my predictions of course apple can change anything up as they please and history is really not any indication anymore for apple because they just release things whenever they want to nowadays but that is my prediction for ios 15.1 but anyways guys there you have it that is ios 15.1 beta 3 a massive update for the iphone 13 pro and 13 pro max users and a nice update for everybody else let me know what you guys think about this update down there in those comments below and if you enjoyed this video i would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and of course make sure to subscribe for a lot more ios 15 coverage here on the channel but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon